What up, what up, what up, baby? Big Drewski here with the CFB Top 25 podcast. I'm here with my co host, Casper. Casper, the co host with the mostest. Uh, mm, very interesting <laughs> week in college football. Uh, this does not pertain to the Top 25, but Auburn got skunked by New Mexico <laughs> State. Son. Yes, yes. Hugh Freeze, eat your heart out. Yes. Yeah. Goodness gracious! What do they get paid? Or yeah, they made 1. money. Eight seven million dollars is what the University of New Mexico State made on their mm. trip to Auburn down there, that small little town in Alabama. That is a lot of money to to travel down there and put a whooping on somebody. I mean, that, they basically paid for their own hitman. Like, yeah, I mean, I hope I hope they at least got steaks in the plane ride or something on the way home. You know, <laughs> I mean. I mean uh, That's almost as bad as Colorado's quarterback, like throwing. What was it? He like threw the ball twice and got an intercept. I don't know if you seen that. Oh yeah, no, I didn't watch that. I, yes. I just flipped that game on, saw the score, and went, "Oh my gosh!" and then hung up. So, you so know. they made what one point eight million? Yeah, one point eight something million. Yeah, almost <sighs> it was close to two. It was like one point eight seven. Like they were. That was almost a tenth of what Texas A and M is going to have to pay Jimbo. <clears throat> Dang. Oh, there it is. Oh, Texas A and M. Dang it, son. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, mm, you know, hopefully you guys had a great uh weekend. I, I know I, I had a great weekend until my balls played. Um and we gotta talk about that game first here in a minute too, which kind of blows, but uh I had a great weekend. It is thanksgiving week so happy thanksgiving to everybody that's listening to this hopefully this podcast will give you some talking points uh normally we say we want you to sound smart at the water cooler now we want you to sound smart when you're forking some cranberry sauce at the old get together hey, you know it'll be better to talk about this than you know trump versus biden so um mm, yeah definitely yes. be sure you you pay attention and get all your notes in so when grandpa asks you about football um you're good to go you know? Yeah, stay away from the political stuff. I mean, you know, don't even bring up Israel or none of that. Just talk about college football. Like, that's way better yes. off. And then it'll so, be on, on Friday for you to watch. So, even better. So, um, in a little bit of role reversal, which I kind of liked there on the LTS show, I'm going to let you take over the news segment. So, what do we got, Casper? All right. So, uh, I just kind of went through the headlines here. Um, Cam Rising, my man, I just want to point this out because he's kind of been waiting for him to come back all year for my my Utah Utes. He has announced he will return for his seventh season in 2024 um, after taking basically another medical redshirt. So I'm um, pretty excited about that. What you got? Is it fair to say that the Utah Utes, have you locked him in as your third team um, in football? Uh, because I mean, balls in football, balls is probably first. Honestly, it it probably is fair to say they're my third team. Like I, they're red. I love their uniforms. I love Salt Lake City, man. Like I really, as much I as I hated traveling with my old job, I loved going to Salt Lake City. So, I mean, yeah, pretty well. Colorado's pretty well. my third because of Dion. But also, I mean, they have a beauty, beautiful stadium as well. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I like that whole like. Flaming Utes thing on the I mean, dude, their helmets are just that common. simple. The simple look really look. I mean, it looks pretty. It looks yeah. pretty badass. I mean, it's like a that. classic college helmet to me. You know, like I mean, it to me it looks better than Alabama or Notre Dame. I hate that crap that's plain. So, uh, yeah, mm. I'll take I'll take Utah as my third. Um, and more WAC twelve news. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that. Washington and WSU Washington extend. And Washington State have extended their deal for uh, the Apple Cup uh, through 2028. Mm, yes. I like it. Um, this is a big deal because this is one of those rivalries that was going to go away with the conference changeover. I don't know if you know this, but Washington State and Oregon State are going to be the only two teams left in the back two. Or now, as we're calling it, the two pack, the pack of dos, the two pack, <laughs> the, two pack. the two pack. The only um, thing that is good in a two pack is like Kit Kat and Reese's. Other than yeah. that, keep so, it. Did you hear the breakdown on the two pack on game day this weekend? I think I be honest with you, I paused a lot because I was taking okay. notes and whatever. I skipped over. So I had the kid; she was asleep. Or no, no, 
Oh, she got up. I don't know. I I was I don't know what I was doing, but I watched a lot of it. Um, basically, it sounds like Oregon State, Washington State is going to be the Pac two. Uh, is going to be a conference. They're probably going to get a deal with the Mountain West to for scheduling to get a whole full season in, where they're going to play Mountain West teams to get a full season in. But while well, Washington was able to extend their game with Washington State. Um, as we know, some rivalries are about to die. Like annually, rivalries will no longer be conference games, and that's sad. So good to see another one of those locked down. Not that that particularly pertains to my heart being from the South, but as a football fan, I love it when in-state rivalries stay a thing. Cause they so what it. other what other anal rivalries are going away? Anal. <laughs> I mean, oh, sorry, a- a- annual. What other um, annual rivalries are going away? Well, we could go through the list in the SEC, but, I mean, it's a long one. Yeah, that's a long um, one. I don't really want to do that. Uh, other than that, kind of this is major playoff affecting news, in my opinion. Florida State loses Jordan Travis um, due to the ankle injury. Hate that for him. I wish him a speedy recovery. want to be sure we get that in first, but – Terrible injury for those of you that have seen it. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I I have not seen it. I don't know that I'm going to look it up. But with these things, it's going to go one or two ways. They're either going to tank or they're going to play inspired. And I I don't don't know who they got as a backup. Honestly, I think they could go 13-0. and I don't think they put him in because they need him. I mean, he was getting – you realize that he was like second in the Heisman standings basically at this point. Um, yeah, second or third, crazy. and you know, it, it hurts to lose them, especially against a game against Northern Alabama, which I don't know if you know, but they were down early in that game, which we'll talk about. Um, North Alabama beat them 13 0 in the for- first quarter, strange, strange times, but um, they did come back with a vengeance after his injury, and um, but hate that for him. But I do think that that basically essentially knocks them out. They are locked in the AC championship game now against Louisville. Um, so we'll see what happens for the Seminoles. Well, I mean, obviously you saw a similar situation with the Tennessee Balls last year when uh, Hooker got hurt. Um, granted, you know, he got hurt when South Carolina was already kind of winning. Um, but, you know, had he stayed in um, and not got hurt, who knows what would have happened. But I also don't think it would hurt the Balls as bad. Once he got hurt, I mean, they just – tanked them in the rankings yeah. and everything but uh the good thing for florida state is they haven't lost a game yet tennessee had already lost to georgia at that point so yeah um we'll see what happens with them but uh you have any more news items you ready to roll into the list sir uh not anything that i can think of that doesn't already pertain to the games let's go number one georgia traveled to number 18 tennessee um dolly Parton and peyton manning and company were there um, Dolly attempted to sing Rocky Top, but it was just too loud. Couldn't get it done. Allegedly, according to sources, Saturday Down South and uh, what was the other one? Fox News. Fox Sports. Fox Sports um, claims that the Tennessee Vols broke the, uh, the decibel record there that was set by Washington, I think, back in 92. Yeah. 133 decibels. Uh, the Vols achieved 137, allegedly, which we are Vols fans. I'm guessing they're investigating it. I'm not just going to jump on the bandwagon, but Casper just happened to be there was, for that game. I was there. It was loud. I mean, it it was the one good moment of the game. So, um, And actually, it wasn't on the score, for the record. It was on a third down, and everybody's in there trying to do their, their part to get us back in the game. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see if we ever hear anything official about that. Um, yeah, I'll, obviously – we're both Tennessee fans. We both picked George in this game, and um, it was a good pick. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself. And, it was uh, hard. I, I wanted to throw up in my mouth, but uh, yeah, no, I just I like being right, Casper. I like being Hopefully right. Tennessee's not ranked next week because I don't want to have to pick them because you're not going to like my pick in that game either. So, uh, oh God, against moving Vandy. on, <laughs> number two, Ohio State. Welcome to town, the uh, Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Um, for a great matchup, Ohio State was favored by 27 and a half points. Um, and uh, they were able to get the win by approximately 34 points, so they covered the spread 37 to 3 over Minnesota. You have any comments on this game, sir? Not at all. Uh, we'll see what happens next week, man. With this one, uh, you know, old Michigan and Ohio State's going up against each other next week, right? 
for yes, sure. Yes, sir. That'll be big time football. There are some big time games next week um, that we are going to want to watch. Um, I think Michigan, Ohio State is obviously the headliner. I'm sure game day will be there. Um, oh, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I was speaking of Michigan. Number three, Michigan travels to Maryland. Uh, tough game. Tough game for Michigan. Probably the toughest game of the year. They end up with the win, 31-24. to 24. I think 24 is the most they've given up. I actually was strongly considering taking the Maryland spread for my lock of the week last week. Yeah. But I just was like, you know, man, Michigan's not even allowed more than like 10-ish points a game on average. So I just was like, you know what, man, I, I'm going a, I'm to a roll with – with uh, you know Michigan, but I really should have went in with the mentality of like everybody's do a struggle win. But yeah. uh, the interesting thing about this game, in my opinion, though, was this game was twenty three to ten at halftime, and Maryland comes back, puts up fourteen in the third to Michigan six, and then uh, you know Michigan got I think a safety or something in the fourth quarter yeah. there, but. Um, they just battle back late, you know. Um, and, you know, tag uh, tag of uh, how you, how you say it, uh, Talia tag tag Lavola. Um, they're uh, Maryland's quarterback. You know, he played good overall, but two interceptions. I mean, you know, in a tight game like that, you can't throw two picks against Michigan. They're gonna capitalize on that, whether they got your signs or not. Uh, they're gonna capitalize on that, but. Uh, you know, the interesting thing too was, uh, you know, I don't, I guess he got sacked a lot or whatever. Um, four sacks, but uh, he got sacked four times, but he had his stat line was eight carries for negative 43 yards. So, um, tough day for him. But uh, Maryland gave it their all, man. Um, you know, got to respect him for that, but just wasn't enough in the end. Yeah. I mean, so. You know, I think this shows a little bit of a chink in Michigan's armor. I felt like me and you at one point, probably a couple weeks ago, were in agreement that Michigan was the best team, I think, at one point. Did we have that debate at least um, there, there in Georgia? We're one at two. one point, I, I kind of had them as sort of my number one yeah. for a minute there. Um, I, well, Georgia was my number one, but I, I think both of us said that they were deserving of the number two. But, you know, we both had them high on our list. It's like, man, they – they may be able to go all the way, but I do think every team deserves a struggle win, though. Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. And, you know, going into Ohio State, obviously all the crap that Michigan's been dealing with as far as hardball and sign stealing and getting suspended and suing people and then not suing people and blah, 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 blah. You, you wonder, does football get lost in the background? And um, you don't want it to, obviously. I think um, Sharon Moore, I think, has done a great job with them. I, I did want to point this was their 1,000th win. Um, as a program, so congratulations to the Wolverines on that. But first one I ever do that, so yeah, congrats yeah, on that. That's definitely a, a momentous thing, and um, you know they've got Ohio State coming to town next week uh, for a noon kickoff, so everybody will still be asleep probably. Um, yeah, so we'll see what they've got, man. I, I'm this. <laughs> if you're a Michigan fan, you haven't been nervous all year, and I think you're nervous right now. Um, so. Um, without Harbaugh, that game next week without Harbaugh is going to be interesting because I mean, you know, he's still hanging around, giving pep talks and stuff in the in the uh, the hotel and stuff. But it's different when the ball coach ain't on the sideline, though. Yeah, you know? and whenever you're in that moment of struggle and he's not there with that reassuring word or that kick in the butt, whatever, um, can they still get it done? I want to point out one thing about that Michigan Ohio State game. Um, I just want to go. I know it's not preview show, but remember, the winner of that is going to play Iowa. Okay, Iowa. For All systems go, buddy. Iowa, unstoppable they're force. Two. They're nine and two, dude. Unstoppable force meets an immovable object. I mean, like that. <laughs> that defense is raw. Michigan you know? Iowa might be like a, literally like a ten to five game. I mean, it could be like <laughs> I mean, points. Yeah. Uh, so w- curious to see what happens there, but uh, but yeah, good win for Michigan on the road at Maryland. Um, I think we kind of talked about that. We both kind of thought they were gonna have to fight to get that win. They did. Uh, moving on, number four, Florida State hosted Northern Al- North Alabama. Um, the Alabama only did. interesting thing about this game was, like Casper mentioned earlier, Jordan Travis out for the season <laughs> with that gnarly leg injury. Um, 
yeah. gnarly, gnarly. Other than that, 58 to 10. Um, I, just like I said, North Alabama took the lead 13 0 in the fourth qu- first quarter, did not score again. They were outscored 58 to 0 in the remaining three quarters. So, uh, kind of interesting start. how that yeah. worked out. But, uh, yeah, you, they can't have a slow start and it's, it, against Florida this week. So, uh, now it but, is, you know, North. It is uh, Northern Alabama, obviously, um, you know. But uh, well, I was going to pull up. Sorry, uh, it's a different link in the notes. What's looking for? Um, I was going to point out. So, um, Florida State did have th- uh, three different quarterbacks in this game, but. Uh, Tate Roadmaker, um, 13 for 23, 217 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He looked pretty good, all things considered. And again, it is Northern Alabama, but uh, we're going to see whether him or Brock Glenn can, can get it done moving forward. But, uh, like I said, he looked good, um, you know, when he was, his number was called on, but, you know, definitely going to hurt him in the long run. So, uh, that's all I had moving on. Number five, Washington travels to Oregon State in the uh, night game in the snow, sleet, whatever, rain. I don't know. It was it was wet it was and cold. That's what I heard. Very iconic looking game watching it. So I watched a lot of them first. That first set of games, I watched a lot of them. I think I was watching five and six at the time um, or whatever. And then, like I said, during and after the balls game, I was just kind of <laughs> like, ugh. Both of us picked Oregon State to win, which I think a lot of people would have been shocked by, but they lost by two points. I mean, it was this was a barn burner, dude. It was actually a great game to watch. Yeah, um, unfortunately, this game came down to uh, interceptions. Old DJ did toss two of them, and that's why they lost the game. I don't know what else to tell you. You can't throw two interceptions against Washington and expect to win a football game. Uh, that has kind of been... One of his hangups is yep. in some of these. He plays great until it's kind of like Will Levis plays great until it's against a good team or in a big moment, and then he kind of kind of yeah. struggles a little bit. Now, did I can't remember? Did he get hurt at one point? I, I was trying to see. It's showing he's active right now, but uh, uh, they like did. Maybe. Yeah, he did get hurt for a little bit. They had uh, another guy came in, Aiden Childs. Um, through a couple passes. I don't I, – I was not I, – I fell asleep in the middle of this game after my long day. Uh, you know, that is the unfortunate thing about the Pac-12 being, like, relevant and really good this year is, like, nobody can watch him. Yeah. Uh, Michael Penix doing his, his thing, but not as crazy as normal 13. Is he first in the Heisman right now? I don't know. I doubt it, man. Like, I, I it, it's going to be – I think Bo Nix is on the rise. Um, and this he 13 is. to 28 for 162 yards hurt him. But I think they had, from what I remember when I watched it, there was guys having issues catching the ball. Um, and I think it was because of the weather, the wet, the cold. So, um, makes it ball a little bit. According to the Heisman <laughs> website, he is currently first. Uh, I don't know when this gets updated. Jaden Daniels is second. Marvin Harrison Jr.'s third. <laughs> <laughs> what is this website? It's the Heisman website. All right. Well, hold on. Is that the ESPN 2023 Heisman tracker? And then uh, after Marvin Harrison Jr., it is Jordan Travis, which obviously he's going to be out. Then Bo Nix is fifth. So he'll he'll probably make the what, – what do they call it? The podium or the uh, – I forgot what they call it. The – Marvin Harrison Jr. will be third. He will be getting to go up there and not win it because they just can't give it to a receiver. This is a quarterback trophy at this point. I don't even know why they let anybody else qualify, in my opinion. So Interesting uh, to watch. Moving on. Uh, number six, Oregon travels to Arizona State. And Bo Nix puts on an absolute clinic. Schlacked him. Uh, he goes 24 of 29, 404 yards and six touchdowns. That's why he should be your Heisman right there. Um, I know it was Arizona State, but he is doing everything that he has to do other than getting the one win at Washington, and he's got something coming for them next. Um, other than that, Arizona State, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say there. They're three and eight. Number uh, seven at Iowa State. This was actually a great game. 
I almost was going to pick Iowa State. Um, I just I felt like Texas had more on both sides, and I think that's actually what I said. But uh, this game, dude, I looked up. It was in the third quarter, like middle of the way through the third quarter, and Texas was up 6-3. to three, And I was like, boy, them Iowa teams got that defense, dude. They put the clamps on you. But uh, eventually Texas ran away 26-16. But this was a great game for a while if you like super defensive type games. Um I did think, I don't know if you, it sounds like you watched a good amount of game day. I was laughing, though, because apparently one of the Texas player or one of the Iowa State players was trash talking like a Texas linebacker or something. And the Texas linebacker responded with, I bet. And when Chris Fowler was doing the story, he's like, now, just for the record, this is not, we're not encouraging you to do this. Do not log in on your parents, uh, your parents profiles and put betting wages in this is just slang and i was like mm. you know because iowa state had that betting scandal early i thought mm. that was a <laughs> high level troll on old chris fowler's part but uh, you know this was a phenomenal game there for a minute yeah they're uh i tell you what reese davis is slinging them on there too man i'm proud of him he's he's been slinging some stuff out there on game day this year i like it keep it up game day yeah this is a you know texas Texas is doing their thing. I think Texas is pro- possibly a playoff capable team. I know that sounds crazy because they're ranked seventh, but yeah, I really, I think they're it's good. Possible. I mean, other than the Oklahoma or other than Oklahoma, I mean, you know, they've been playing great. I mean, they've got they got some good quality wins. Um, obviously, they need to beat Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, whoever they end up playing in that uh, championship game. But uh, we'll see what happens there. So. So um, it's uh for what? So right now Texas is seven and one. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Kansas State are all six and two. So yeah. it's getting. It looks like it's going to be Oklahoma State in that championship game. Um, more than likely, dude. If Iowa State would have beat Texas, you would have five teams sitting at six and two. <laughs> Interesting. Yep. yep. But uh, all right, Great moving time. on. Moving on, number eight, Alabama hosts the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Absolutely shellacked them, 66 to 10. <laughs> Schlack Bama, is the word of the week, I guess. Alabama doing that thing. Jalen Milrow only threw 16 passes for 197 yards. Probably paid for like five minutes. I didn't watch much of this game. Uh, Bama played. Uh, Nobody did. I think you had to have like ESPN Plus or something. Bama to did watch play it. three quarterbacks. They all had completions. And, uh, yep, they did their thing. Moving on. Uh, number nine, Missouri hosted the Florida Gators, and the thicker kicker had to get the win, 33-31. Yeah, this was a great game as well. Really back and forth. Florida was up 7-3, then at halftime, Mizzou was up 13-7, and then the Gators come back and, you know, outscored them 14-10, to and it, it was just it was kind of back and forth. This was a great game. I figured Mizzou was going to win. Um <laughs> You know, I figured Mizzou was going to win, but uh, I I didn't. I I thought maybe it could be close, but uh, yeah, um, Mizzou did not cover that spread at eleven and a half. But now this was a great game, man. I mean, I you know, Mizzou's they're balling, man. I, I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to do next year. You know, yeah, I am too as well. Um, Florida needs a win for a bowl game. They needed to get a win either uh, at Missouri or at home next week against number four Florida State. Um, I think. I mean, I'm probably going to pick them over Florida State next week. They, I know they're only five and six, but for whatever reason, they beat good teams, and um, I, you know, it's going to be in the swamp, in-state rivalry, backup quarterback. We'll see what they got. Uh, Missouri going forward. I mean, Missouri's, you know, they're going to have a respectable ball game here, and they're actually um, good. Like, it, I don't. Yeah, this is not a fluke. Like, they're actually good. They're a good football team. It looks like they're going to be set up here pretty well to go ten and two, um, in the SEC, which is you know, in, in the SEC that is a feat. They're finishing second in the East, and uh, congratulations to them on a great year. So also. Uh... There was a great rivalry brewing between Mizzou and Tennessee, man. Like almost like reminiscent of the the former Spurrier days back in the day with uh, Tennessee and Florida. Like you know that back and forth at Hopple and Drinkowitz or however you say his name, 
uh, Dirk you know, Wits. Dirk Wits, whatever. Yeah, that, ain't on business. They're they're finally becoming relevant. So yeah. Texas A and M, you know, yeah. you got no excuse. I guess okay. we're going to kick out Texas A&M and M and Vandy now if you're an SEC fan. All right. Anyways, uh, moving on. Number 10, Louisville travels to Miami and uh, ends up pulling out the fourth quarter dub. Dang it. I missed my pick. Yeah, we both had Miami. Um, they played great. Just ended up getting outscored there. Uh outscored in the fourth quarter 15 to three you know you got to close them out miami seems to have a trend of not being able to close out ball games man i mean you know the infamous uh non-neal um you know and and this game here i mean you just got to close them out man i mean you know yeah it's a tough deal but you know louisville now 10 and one looking to go 11 and one play florida state for the ac championship um and you know potentially i guess if florida state loses to Florida, I don't know. I mean, even if they don't, I guess they could. Like, this has be, been a know, wild lost team. This has been a wild year in college football, dude. Absolutely wild. We could Speaking, have like 10 one loss teams. Like, that should scare you. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, but speaking of wild, uh, number 12 Penn State beat uh, Rutgers 27 to 6. Absolutely blew. One of my bets, I had I had Rutgers at plus 20 and a half, and then Penn State goes down and scores late in the fourth. I was like, golly, it's rigged. Uh, that really. really worked out for him. I got 27 points against Rutgers. Good job. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Shiano's turning Rutgers around. I mean, they're six and five. Like, they're not bad, but just not enough against Penn State at home. Number 13 on Miss host. Louisiana, Monroe, Monroe. Uh, get the win, thirty-five to three. Not much to talk about here. Lane Train rolls on another nine and two, headed into the Egg Bowl against Mississippi State on Friday. Mm. Um, Looking forward up, to it. Up next, number fourteen, Oklahoma travels to BYU, plays a close game, uh, gets the the fourth quarter touchdown for the Dub, thirty-one twenty-four. You guys' thoughts on this one? I took that BYU spread at plus 24 and a half, and I almost was going to take the money line. BYU has one of the most underratedly lit home uh, environments, in my opinion, in college football, dude. I mean, they got fire twirls, twirlers and everything out there, dude. They got it popping out there. But, uh, yeah, oh, you know, OU had a struggle win. I mean, uh, they were literally matched – Tit for tat, just all game long. I mean, first, second, and third quarter, they scored even points. OU had that touchdown in the fourth to put them uh, put them above. You know, BYU drops to five and six, but uh, you know, OU's going to go to a good bowl game probably. But man, Oklahoma, if you're Oklahoma right now, you really have to be dreading that loss to Oklahoma State, man. Like you, oof, that's tough. That one's got to hurt. Uh, number fifteen, LSU hosts Georgia State. Um, get the big win. Jaden Daniels doing his thing. 56 14. Mm. Yeah, I mean, did what they had to do uh, against Georgia State, you know. Uh, Another you know, 413 yards for Mr. Daniels, who, as you just noted, is up there in uh, the running for the Heisman Trophy. Um, he's been slinging the ball as good as anybody else is out there. LSU, man, I don't know how they do this every year. They choke early in the year and then they get better. And, you know, it must, it must be a tough thing to play in the SEC West. I think as LSU doesn't have to play in the SEC West, it's not a thing that probably helps them overall uh, going forward. So, um, big win for them. Um, number 16, Iowa hosts Illinois. Another Tough. barn burner oh, football game, baby. Good game. I mean, Iowa is like the king of just grinding it out, son. Yeah, I mean, when you when fifteen to thirteen, was, am I mistaken? Was the first score of this game a safety? It was. Iowa gets gets a safety in the first quarter, and it was um, like, like three minutes into the game, and yeah, it was like yeah, first quarter three to two. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like. Can you imagine you know, if, like, a fifty-two yard field goal for the record? So it wasn't even like a gimme. Like I was long. Iowa is leading their division of the Big Ten. Yeah. Uh 
can you imagine if they would have like closed it out like five to three <laughs> or something yeah. stupid? It'd be awesome. Like, it'd be awesome. I mean, Iowa, Iowa just, I mean, that defense though, like I said, I, I'm actually kind of excited, you know, because like it, it's literally like unstoppable force meets immovable object, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. They travel to Nebraska next week, and then they'll get that uh, championship game against either Michigan or Ohio State. And um, you know, I, I'm they're going to put up a fight in that game. I mean, I, I mean, dude, the they're highest they're put up a fight in that game. The highest points that they have allowed was against Penn State, uh, who they lost to thirty-one and zip. But other than that, I mean, the highest point total was. Uh, was 14 against uh, Utah State. But, yeah. uh, I mean, they, they just rocking and rolling, man. I mean, that, I mean, they haven't played anybody. If you go back and look through here, they really have not played anybody. Somehow no, they, I mean, they played in the Big Ten and they did not play Ohio State or Michigan in the regular season. It's strange how that could work out, but it's just one of them rarities. Where you which can I think we did. De- we determine Big Ten's doing away with divisions, though, moving forward. After I think. this year, yes, sir, they are. Moving so. on from them to the big time. So, All righty. Uh, number 17, Arizona, host number 22, Utah Utes. And uh, Utah just doesn't have it anymore, man. I think their year, they, they rode the hot hand um, on the quarterback thing, kind of switching back and forth between Bryson Barnes and I can't remember the other guy's name. Bryson Barnes has ended up taking over with Cam Rising being out, but it's just not quite been enough for them to have the success they were hoping for. Interestingly enough, you had Utah that kind of rallied around the magic and not having Cam Rising. They were playing inspired. They came out hot and heavy, dropped off. Arizona got off to a slow yeah. start. And here lately, they've just been clicking yeah. uh, kind of a hot, you know, you hot and you cold, you know, whatever. But Arizona, man, they're what, eight and three? Arizona's eight and three. They uh, took their losses to Mississippi State on that week two loss, kind of like you're talking about, which we're kind of like, hey, really? And then uh, they lost to Washington, USC. I mean, overall, they have had a good year. If you take away that Mississippi State loss, uh, Arizona is a top 10 team, in my opinion. So um, they are also, you know, although Washington or, or Oregon clinched, didn't they? Pac 12. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, Arizona is six and two. So, yeah. Um, I guess if Oregon, no, no, I take that back. If Oregon loses to Oregon State this weekend, uh, what would the tiebreaker be between? I have no idea what tiebreaker would be between Arizona and Oregon because they didn't play each other. So I have no idea how that would go. I'm guessing it would go to overall record, and Oregon would still take the dub. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's pretty well how it's set up. Mm, very interesting. Um, moving, moving on. on. Number nineteen, <laughs> Notre Dame host Wake Forest. Um, I think we kind of thought this was going to be a close game, and it was not. Notre Dame absolutely blows Wake out of the the stadium, uh, forty five to seven. Wake's four and seven. Notre Dame's eight and three. Notre Dame another year of what it could have been, what a shoulda coulda. I thought um, Wake would at least cover yeah. the twenty four and a half spread. I did pick Notre Dame to win. Um, yeah. You got lost in the the love of those took, Carolina schools, but I'm sorry. But you know, I, I see where you were going though with the Sam Hartman versus Wake Forest. You thought Wake Forest was going to get redemption. I thought Sam Hartman was going to get redemption. Thank but you. I just think Notre Dame. I mean, he's just got more around him at Notre Dame than what Wake Forest yeah. had. But uh, you now Notre Dame's finishing out. You know, I mean, eight and three. Um, you know, they're finishing out strong. So uh, it's a good yeah, year for them. Stanford to finish up next week um, at Stanford. Hopefully they can get their win, finish up eight and four. And, um, I mean, nine and three and uh, move on with it. But yeah, Wake goes down. Sam Hartman throws for another 277 yards. Uh, he had that one little like uh, play action. He did like a little dance, like he was humping the ball for a minute. I don't know if you saw that, but no, it's it was kind of funny looking a little. Uh, play he did. It's like there was nobody back there for him to play action to, so he kind of just like held the ball. It's kind of weird, but anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, number twenty, UNC, <laughs> you know, we'll just move on past that. One. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, number no, twenty, no. UNC travels to Death Valley, take on the Clemson Tigers. It was a three thirty game. I was in Neyland Stadium. 
Thank God my, I didn't have to watch. As my I God, I mean, win. UNC just, this is like one of the worst unravelings of like a good football. I mean, literally lost to Georgia Tech, which was like, mm, you know, and they lost to Virginia before that. I think Virginia was the first bad loss, and then they turned around and lost to Georgia Tech, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, back to back. Like, I mean, if they beat Virginia and Georgia Tech, who they were heavily favored to beat, they'd be a one loss. I mean, they're fighting for, you know, a, a top four spot right now, even with this loss to Clemson. Yeah, uh, well, so, maybe. Uh, Carolina. Um... <sighs> First drive, Omari and Hampton run for no gain at the Clemson 7. It's first and goal at the Clemson 7. He fumbles the ball. Um, yeah, not good. Um, I think he fumbled twice on that play, and uh, Clemson recovers the ball, moves on. And then uh, they he fumbled again later in the first quarter. Carolina got behind, just never could catch up. Drake May did throw an interception late in this game, kind of one of those like two minutes to go, was slinging the ball through an interception. But um, the two fumbles from Lamar and Hampton really kind of lost the game for the Heels here. Um, yeah, they only lost by 11, and he had two big fumbles. Um, the interceptions was one to one. And I even Drake May's one interception, in my opinion, was one of those interceptions he only threw because of the, you know, situation we've been put in earlier so uh it is tough to be a tar heel but uh look mac brown's not good for more than nine wins he's never going to get 10 unless it's a bowl game so uh it's what it is number 21 kansas state travels to number 25 kansas this was a great uh in-state rivalry um the inch i mean this game here was i mean it was back and forth back and forth back and forth um you know, I kind of figured Kansas State was going to win it, but the night game on those in-state rivalries, I feel like somewhat cancels out. But uh, Kansas gave it their all, man. Kept it close. Just wasn't enough. Yeah. How about uh, old KSU with old defensive two-point conversion, baby? I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, I mean, I've wa- block kick uh, in the second quarter. Uh, uh-huh. Kansas scored their touchdown to go up thirteen to seven. Kick got blocked. They returned at 13-9. Um, and, you know, Kansas State ended up getting the win by four points. But I think that was a big momentum change in this game from kind of what I heard uh, talking to old Pops. So Interesting uh, thing enough, too, was Kansas, uh, 234 yards on the ground. Kansas State, 166 on the ground. But the interesting thing, Will Howard for Kansas State, 165 <laughs> yards through the air. He had two touchdowns, one interception. Cole Ballard from Kansas, 162 yards, so three less yards. Um, but he had one touchdown and two interceptions. So interceptions, you know. Yep. That, that'll been get you. It on here all year, all year long. Uh, number Will two. Howard also got the game winning uh, play there. So good on him. But Will Howard's pretty solid. But mm. that's what I like to hear. Go, Will Howard. Um, uh, moving on, number 23, Oklahoma State travels to Houston. Um, this game, I think I would call this closer than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. It's 43 to 30. Um, it looks like uh, Houston didn't really get you know, it wasn't like garbage time points or anything. Um, 13 point win for Oklahoma State. Uh, they go on, they're now eight and three. Like we said earlier, looking to play Texas for the Big 12 championship if they can win next week. Also, this is random, but I knew there was one game I was going to talk about it. and uh, Or, well, no, I did mention it, that Louisville game, how they scored 15 in the fourth quarter. I mean, Miami had that game. <laughs> I can't get over how they blew that, dude. I mean, they literally had that game and then just yep. threw it away. But anyways, I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So this game, uh, just one of them deals. I don't know what to say here. Uh, Oklahoma State kind of had to struggle to get the win, I guess, um, but ended up being good enough. So eight and three on the year. I mean, they're they're finishing strong. You know, oh my well, Gundy, Houston's a little bit of a disappointment coming this year. weren't they ranked top twenty five early in the year? Uh, well, they had that high powered offense last year. They were like first in the nation uh, or something a few they, times. I think. 
they've played some close games too. Um, yeah, they took that. I forgot, I forgot about that loss at Rice. That was a tough one. You're like, huh? What? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and then they actually got blown out by Kansas State. I don't know. Uh, this is a good effort for them at home to I probably wrap up their home game for the year. Uh, moving on, number 24, Tulane travels to FAU. Get the win 24 to 8, cover the spread over under misses. Uh, we both picked Tulane, big green wave, doing big green wave things. They had them shut out and gave up that eight points in the fourth quarter. Come on now, we can't be doing that big green wave. What the heck, man? What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought I'm trying to look up here that touchdown. I'm assuming that was a two point conversion at the end uh, on that last drive for them to, to get that done there for the touchdown where they get their eight at. They got their eight on a 15. Yep. Man, they did go for the two point conversion, gave it up. So can't be doing that. But uh, I guess big green wave 10 and one. If I mean, they, for them, it's a solid season, but it's just, I mean, they don't get any respect because they don't really play anybody. Yeah. I mean, they played mid- Ole Miss and they took the loss like by 17. So, like, when other you than have that, that game, you have to win that game if you're other than that, respect. though. The biggest, the biggest games is like Memphis and Tulsa, right? Yeah. I mean, UTSA, who also has ended up kind of being a letdown this year. A lot of people are talking about their offense coming in this year, and they're they're eight and three, but just haven't looked all that that convincing. So, uh, but Big Green Wave does play UTSA next week to wrap up the year and uh, go ahead and win the American Conference, I suppose. Yep. So that completes the top twenty-five. Um. I've been on a hot streak. I went 13 and two. Casper finished out 10 and five. Respect, <laughs> respectable numbers both ways. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm really only 10 and five. I thought it was going to be like five and 10, to be honest with you. It was no, a real one for me this the, weekend, dude. It was the like two, every game. The two that I missed, we both missed. Um, and then we flip flopped on a few other ones, but other than that, uh, the top twenty five is not out yet, so uh, we're not going to go over that. But uh, any other anything else you want to? I mean, uh, right. we did kind of a you know happy Thanksgiving thing on the LTS show, Little Tangerine show. Check it out if you want to hear us ramble about Thanksgiving yeah, but, a little bit too. But yeah, man, like this is it. This is uh big games coming up. Y'all be sure to eat eat some turkey, watch some football, and uh, hey. Black Friday's overrated. Shop from the house. Cyber Monday it is, okay? Yes. Watch football. Watch football. No shopping. Watch yeah, football. smoke a turkey, deep fried turkey, do something. Don't burn your house down, though. Hang out with your family, yes. Uh, Casper is going to be doing an in, uh, instructional video on how to not burn your house down. Um, mm, just kidding. I could if I was you getting could. paid for it. Yes, I could. You could. Um, but uh, other than that, that is all we have uh thank you hopefully you guys have enjoyed it have an awesome thanksgiving until next time big drewski and casper the go have a great weekend yep we're gonna get back after it this upcoming friday enjoy y'all's turkey day peace later oh yeah oh yeah